Hello, hello, and welcome to City Skylines. And we're in my town of Erdsley. Not Erdsley, Erdsley. Now, you may notice that the title does not say talk through, and that's because this is simply just an overview. We're looking at a quick overview of my city that I've built. And as you can see, this is not really suitable for a talk through anyway, because, uh, well, the city is already here. And I'm thinking in this video, what we're just going to do is we're going to quickly go over the city because I put a lot of work into this and I thought I'd, I'd indulge myself, I'd show it off. And um, you'll, you'll notice it's a very compact city. Got about 83,000 citizens in this city. Citizens! And, well, there's not really much breathing space. They're all packed in there. And uh, you may also notice that I've got a lot of spaghetti going on, so we'll get into the good stuff. But we'll just start off with the basics. We've got two districts in Erdsley. We've got Hollington over here to the left, and we've got Redgate over here to the right. Erdsley is a commercial and industrial hub, so I'll just show you. We've got loads and loads of residential in the centre here, and we've got our industrial off to the side, quite spread out. I mean, this is far from a realistic city, it's far from a really a practical city in many ways. I'll, when we get into the real details later on, you'll notice that um, <laughs> driving from point A to point B in this, um, this city of mine is uh, ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. But um, it works. I mean, in terms of city skyline it works. If I show you my uh, traffic here, we're at 85%. A lot of these red areas are not necessarily traffic jams, they're more slow traffic. And I'm fine with that, even if it's on highways. As long as um, this main highway that goes right through the city, you get uh, you know, these turn-offs and intersections here. As long as that's not completely backed up, the city works okay. There's obviously going to be a lot of uh, traffic within this industrial area. Uh, that's difficult to sort out, but I've done my best. I promise. I've done my best. <laughs> uh, I've put quite a lot of hours into this city, and um, like I said, I could not not show it off. You'll notice that I am paused, though, because um, e even when I'm not recording, I get a bit of frame rate issues playing this, and, well, City Skyline is a very taxing game. I just have not got the sort of computing power to, uh, or maybe not even computer power, just computing knowledge, because uh, it's probably not very well optimized my PC. I'm sure if I, I press the play button here, you'll see that it doesn't necessarily help the frame rate. Look at them go. But yeah, I mean, like I said, the uh, the traffic flow was a big part of this. I mean, I'm trying to fix these problem areas where I have a lot of trouble. A lot of this does seem to be with the AI in City Skylines, because you will notice that people are just, they're terrible at picking a lane. They'll, they'll just stop in the middle of the highway and try and cross about three lanes at once, and that's just infuriating. Absolutely infuriating. But, um, I did start this off on vanilla, that, that should be noted. There was no mods or anything to begin with. Obviously, as time went on, I'm, I'm starting to notice that mods are kind of necessary if you want to get a good, a good city in City Skylines. If you want to get a city that works well, um, especially with these uh, lane options, as you can see, they're just uh, they're just not the best for integration. You really need to go in and micromanage a lot of things in this game. Um, to help out, I've tried to add as many paths as possible. Like, if I go back, you can see there's a lot of um, commercial in this area. It's kind of on the outskirts, really only accessible by car if you come down this highway here. So what I've done in terms of um, pedestrians is I've gave them a lot of uh, these walkways, loads of paths that sort of cross over from the individual residential hubs. And this is quite a... I wouldn't call it unique, but certainly it's a big feature of more of the uh, the Redgate district. So Redgate's sort of on the southern side of the main sort of connection to the motorway there. So you've sort of almost got this uh, highway roundabout. So if we look at the uh, the entrance to the city, 
So if you're coming down the motorway, whoop, 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 whoop. I've actually just noticed this. Yeah, there's no real way in through the city this way, which is interesting. You'll actually have to come off across here and into the industrial district. I might need to fix that. But originally, you would come off at this sort of massive intersection here. I'm trying to point, but I realise all you can see is my cursor. So you'd come into the city here, and then depending on when you want to go, this red gate intersection, this red gate intersection was originally a roundabout, <laughs> and it's it's evolved over time to specific needs. I realised that the roundabout just could not hold the traffic and people trying to change lanes go into different areas, and now it's just it's a spaghetti monstrosity. That's what it is. But generally, you have two options when you're coming into the city. Actually, I'll just... Yeah, there we go. That A little bit less cluttered on the, the screen there. You have two options, really. You either turn left. Yeah, that's left for them. You either turn left, you go to more residential districts, or you turn... No, you just go straight ahead, actually. And this takes you down into the more commercial area here, and off to the industrial area here. But when, if you do turn left off into this sort of more um, residential area, you'll, you'll notice that along the top here, you can either go two ways. You go around sort of left going, or no, you keep turning right, sorry. It, I'm getting disorientated, it's difficult to tell. You can kind of turn right and go and sort of uh, roundabout around the right here. And that's one way of going. You've got these sort of, uh, I've called them bullsack intersections, because that's what they remind me of. Uh, sorry to be crude. But what this does help is, um, if you are going down this sort of left path round into the industrial area, you do have the option of either turning left into this in residential area, or right into this residential area, or Obviously, you can keep going, turn onto the main highway here and go down into the big industrial area, or you can turn left and go around this massive spaghetti area round into the other residential area. And really, the reason that this one up the top can let you turn both ways, but this one down the bottom, you'll notice that you can only really turn into the resi residential area that's next to you. The reason the top one allows it is because these people coming down over from Hollington into Redgate, and then they have the option pretty much of going ahead, and that's about it. I wanted them to give them a, the ability to sort of do a U-turn. This way they don't have to go all the way around the roundabout and start causing more traffic to be in this intersection here, this intersection here. I wanted that specifically to be based around these areas, because I've already got, because this residential area can't immediately go over to this residential area they'll start putting more pressure on this sort of highway roundabout whereas on this section to so these two ones they can sort of cross over into each other and it sort of allows more more breathing room over here where you've got a more immediate highway exit whereas over here there's a bit more room um, I am trying to alleviate more pressure on this intersection here, especially because there's an industrial area, but that's not really playing into it. It's just that more industrial or um, residents trying to get home from the industrial area will sort of take this large highway up into the residential sections. But um, that's the, <laughs> the, the main feature, should I put it. And that does, that's that sort of a two-way highway. Originally these were just large avenues, but because of all these intersections, I had to turn it into more of a roundabout highway style. This really gave us a higher capacity and I will continue to do this with this section here, maybe even this section here, as we need to have more high density residential. And it's really, um, the name, Erdsley is very British. Um, this is this is not a British city. Don't get me wrong; that there might be a British city that is vaguely reminiscent of this. 
that there might be, but when I did start this out, there wasn't any plan, there wasn't any idea of the style of set I going to, I didn't think, oh, this has to be European, this has to be American, etc, etc, you know. I, I was just trying to go for a high capacity city, large amounts of um, citizens in it. That was really the only goal. I wanted to make it very compact as well, and I think I've I've made it about as compact as I can <laughs> I can do with my skill level. <laughs> I, I keep saying this, like I love to play games I'm not very good at. The um, you'll notice, like I said, there's a large uh, commercial district here, and you can only really get to it by road if you go through the large highway connections. Okay, and that is, in real life, that is a very silly thing. But, but there are a lot, a lot of pathways connecting. You'll see a hell of a lot of citizens going down these large pathways that connect it to the commercial zone. And these pathways, if you'll see if I back up here, they go all the way through these residential zones, almost pretty much all the way down to the bottom. And that's how I compensate for the uh, sort of the out the way style of this uh, commercial zone. It looks a bit weird having all these huge high-rises on the edge of the city, but I suppose as we expand I'm looking to have a bit more sprawling residential. So obviously this is low low density residential over in Collington. Collington's the more uh, the new side of the city, but eventually I imagine there will be more high density residential in this area. But yeah, other than that, the just making sure the um, the spaghetti intersections. Like I said, if you're into spaghetti, this is just a, a absolute madness over here. Um, I don't know what I was thinking, but <laughs> it is cool to look at. If I just play that again, just to show you the ridiculousness of this uh, these spaghetti junctions. Like this one in general isn't too bad. I mean, it's mainly because you've got the weird highway that sort of bumps over that looks a, a bit weird there. It's the fact that you've got this massive roundabout, these oh, spaghetti and everywhere. In fact, if you work it out, a car has to come all... If a car wants to get from here over to this intersection here, it has to go on to the roundabout, come off, go all the way around here. Oh, you can't turn. <laughs> you can't turn left, you have to turn right, go round, oh, down... Uh, I think this was a one way as well. They have to turn off here or go all the way around again. And uh, I've not really spent the time figuring out how I'm going to change that, but to, uh, I should have just done a T junction, just a, a cross junction or something like that. It would have been simpler, probably more effective, but uh, <laughs> it's more fun for the future. That's how, the way I think about it. It's all about giving yourself challenges. That's what it's really about. But yeah, loads of room to expand. Um, I think I've got the mod installed that lets you uh, do all the areas. So I've got the full 25 areas unlocked. Um, I've got Traffic Manager President Edition that's installed. So I'll have to get micromanaging on some of these sections. But other than that, it's uh, rather nice. I was going to show you my... A sort of like public transport network. Um, the metro, oh, it's all rainbowy. The metro sort of does a big loop around, and then this big loop is cut into minor sections. And I know that this undoubtable, like this could be done better. It could be done a hell of a lot better. But um, it's like I like to micromanage. <laughs> I like to do it, but I never do it efficiently. That's never done efficiently, that's just the way I do it. If, uh, this is what I've got so far. Loads of, um, sort of like, uh, circles within circles that goes around the entire city. And you'll notice most of my bus lines are based around connecting the sort of um, residential districts to, well, pretty much to these metro stations so they can carry them around. Kind of like a... Uh, a wheel and spoke, if you put like hub and spoke, I think they call it. Kinda like that, not really because I'm just silly. 
I do have um, these two cargo terminals. Actually, in fact, I'm going to show you. This cargo terminal is actually not badly designed, in my opinion. Like, um, big industrial ports can come over and round into this. And it's a one-way system, meaning that while there is heavy traffic on this road here, it really is funneled out and through. There's not too much backup. Uh, there is another one here that's a bit less well designed, but um, there you go. That's not too bad. But there is a ferry depot over here. I've not really started making a ferry line. The way I'm thinking about it is the ferry depot will be here. There might be suburbs over here, maybe industrial over this area. Yeah, there's a lot of pollution. I've tried to get rid of it, but I just won't go. So. The, the people are just going to have to be living in squalor. They'll have to deal with it. But, um... This is kind of more like an overview video. If if you would like to see me do a series, I may just do a series anyway. Please comment, because otherwise... Eh. If it's something you want to see, and I don't know it's something you want to see, I probably won't do it. Because... City Skylines to me is something difficult to sort of talk over while you do it. There are some really, really good YouTubers out there who do City Skylines, and I am. They're more like artists, and <laughs> I am a mere novice and, and pale in comparison to them. Um, names that come to mind are Strict Toaster. Flux Trance, um, Prez, I've watched him recently, um, $2.20, these are some really top-notch City Skylines players, they do City Infrastructurist, can't forget him, he's brilliant. Um, these guys, some of them do commentary, some of them simply do time lapses, but the cities they create are not only realistic, they're genuinely gorgeous, they run well, it is absolute amazing feat. I'll probably um, put little uh, cards to their channels up top. <laughs> uh, that's what I'll do. I'm funneling away viewers to other channels. That's uh, that's what I'm best at doing. I forgot to mention, there's there's almost like a little university ground over in Hollington. Uh, while I, this did start with vanilla, as I said, I always did have quite a lot of um, really cool assets. I'm sure if any of you guys have been on the uh, the content manager of the workshop, you'll see these sort of assets. They're just lovely. Um, you know, all the sort of older looking buildings. I've just shoved them in there. Enough. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really think too much about how good things look. Like, I mean, Jesus Christ, look at this building just completely out of place. But, uh, you know, it's always lovely to have that that un truly unique building that just stands out. But, um, I think before I continue rambling on in complete madness, I should probably end it here. Uh, there's loads, loads more I could probably talk about. I mean, w when I'm doing this, there's loads to consider. Like, um, especially how, um, traffic flows through this industrial zone. There's loads to think about, but, um... Uh, I think I'm going to end this video here, and if I want to talk more, if anyone wants to comment and tell me they want to see more, I'm more than happy to do so. I may even do so anyway, but um, I think we'll leave it there, and thank you for watching.